Oh yeah, oh, he... Oh, that's his plan, yeah. He's coming in, so that's a good sign. No, he's going out. All right, well, it took a while after seeing that many prints. He might be the one making all in prints. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I doubt that, but you never know. This a, might be the best one so far. It's not buried down good either. No, he was laying on top like he might yeah. just be coming in. Look at that pretty one. Oh, yeah. I think that other one's better, though. These are nice ones. Oh, yeah. Being beautiful. Okay, I'll just show you real quick how I clean flounders. Well, you can see this one, he was gigged right there last night. So what I like to do is I like to cut in around the head and the guts, go straight down the lateral line in the middle of them. Like I said, this is a how I, not a how to. Everybody does fish different. You know, I just take and fillet each side off of it off of the ribs there. I did a catch and cook making stuffed flounders last year. This year I think I'm going to do a, 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 a flounder ceviche with them. These are super, super fresh fish. Just I gigged them last night. While they're fresh, I'll make something really good with them. Now I'll cut the rib cage off of this section. Take a fork and hold on to the skin at the end of the tail. And just fillet the meat right off the skin. These little outer, outer fin piece will just pull right off. So you want to make sure you don't have those pin bones in that section there. Then I keep a pan full of ice water. Do the same thing with this piece. Flay it right off the skin. See how pretty that fillet is? There's some beautiful flounder here. And see right there is that section of pin bones. Take that off and I'll drop that in my pan of ice water. Keep it super chilled till I'm ready to eat it. And we do the exact same thing on the bottom. The bottom fillets aren't usually as thick as the top fillets, but you, get, you do get a lot of meat. So I'll come right down this natural lateral line, which is pretty much the center of the spine on them. And then I just take my knife and fillet the meat right off the rib cage. Same thing with this side. You can see how easy they are to fillet once you go right down that lateral line. Nothing left of that fish. Do the same thing, hold the skin down, lay the meat right off the skin. Pull that little extra piece off, drop it in the ice bath. So you can see when you get that there. And then on this, on this piece, you're gonna have them rib bones, which you don't want. And then peel the filet, make sure you don't have them pin bones up in this section. Beautiful. I 
That's one down, only nine more to go. So the whole time I'm filleting fish, I like to keep them in an ice bath in a, in a little tub here. This keeps the fillets chilled as cold as can be. It really gives your fish a good flavor when you keep it fresh and prepare it properly. Okay, today's catch and cook is going to be a flounder ceviche. We're going to use some real nice fresh flounder, salt, pepper, soy sauce, Worcestershire, a little bit of seafood magic. We're going to put some... Uh, couple drops of sesame oil and basil for an Asian flavor. Sweet Vidalia onion, bell pepper, the juice of two lemons, some garlic, and a tomato. So we'll take and we'll dice all this stuff up, combine it all, and let it marinate in the fridge for an hour or two. All right, the first thing we'll do is we'll slice up our flounder. And I'm going to slice nice pieces on a bias like this. almost like a sashimi slice to it. Boy, that's some beautiful flounder. Only a couple hours old too. Okay, so for the amount of fish we got here, we got five little toes of garlic chopped, about a quarter cup of bell pepper chopped, a little bit of celery chopped, maybe about eight to a quarter cup, some chopped basil, about a half a cup of chopped onion, and one small chopped tomato. So what we'll do is we'll take and we'll lightly salt and pepper the fish. Put a couple shakes of uh, soy sauce in there. One or two shakes of Worcestershire sauce. And remember, Worcestershire is a fish-based sauce. Just a couple, couple little drops of sesame oil. Sesame oil is real strong, so you don't want to use a lot. Then we'll go ahead and put all of our chopped ingredients in. Garlic, bell pepper, tomatoes, a little bit of celery, sweet basil, diced onion. Put a tiny bit of Paul Prudhomme seafood magic in there. just because it's got a good balance of seafood based herbs. And we'll squeeze the juice of two lemons in. Between the acid in the tomato and the acid in the lemons, it'll actually cook this fish as it marinates. Take, we'll get a spoon and we'll Stir all this stuff to marinate together. So flounder is a perfect fish for doing this. Real clean, real pure, real delicate tasting. And as you can see, look how pretty that looks. So it's 309 now. I'll take it out at about an hour and stir it, and I'll take it out at about two hours and stir it and show you what it looks like. I know you saw me put these few little pieces on a on a plate. Give them a little dusting of black pepper, a little dusting of uh, salt. We'll take and we'll put a couple drops of sesame oil. A couple shakes of Worcestershire. A couple shakes of soy sauce. Try to squeeze some residual lemon out of here. And this right here will be some fresh flounder sashimi. Look at how pretty that is.
Oh, that's really good. Ice cold. You can taste a little bit of the sesame oil in there, a little bit of Asian flavor with the sesame oil and the soy sauce. Wow. Might have to uh, eat more of this than the ceviche and it's not even ready. This is a delicious tasting fresh fish right here. Hmm. That is super good. Yeah, if you want something to dif different to do with your seafood, you don't get much fresher than this. Swimming last night, made into a sashimi and a ceviche. Well, those few pieces were absolutely delicious. I can't wait to taste the marinated ceviche later. Okay, this is after one hour. You can see the meat starting to turn white, starting to starting to break down with the acids from the lemon juice and the tomato. So this is a little after two hours. You can see it's getting wider and wider as the acids in the lemon juice and tomato start to break down and actually cook the meat. And here's a little serving I have portioned out to eat now. So you can see here, here's our ceviche after two hours. It's got a little basil bud top just for a little garnish on it and some crackers. Lots of garlic, lots of uh, tomatoes, lots of crunchy vegetables. It's really good with all the lemon juice and all the seasoning in it. Very good. It could probably use a hair more salt. But all in all, it's got really well-developed flavors with the little bit of seasoning, balic, the crunchiness from the onions, garlic, and bell pepper, and celery. Very good dish. So this flounder got to go international. It was caught in the Gulf of Mexico. The sashimi is a Japanese-style dish, and ceviche is originally a Peruvian-style dish. So, international flounder. So I got about a cup here I'm going to eat tonight, and then I'm going to eat some more tomorrow at lunch. Really, really light and refreshing tasting fish. Don't be afraid to try different recipes with your seafood. You'll be surprised sometimes. So we got a flounder catch and cook. We had a little bit of sashimi with it raw, and this is some ceviche with it cooked in acids. Till the next video, get out there and go fishing.